Well, this is the second video I'm going to make on this historical artifact, but there's a reason for that. I now think it is much, much rarer than I originally understood. And until somebody disabuses me of the notion, I do think it's likely this is the exact copy of this document that was turned in to the governor of Texas. John Connolly, the man who, along with JFK, was a shooting victim on 11-22-63. Here he is in one of the many, you know, retrospectively eerie and tragic photos from that day. And just imagine what this is all like for him. He's the governor of the state that the murder of the century happens in. And he's also one of the shooting victims. And the president is murdered, you know, in the same car that he is riding in. So imagine what it was like to be in office almost exactly one year later, one year after that event, and receive in your office a report entitled Texas Supplemental Report on the Assassination of President John F. Kennedy and the Serious Wounding of Governor John B. Connolly. Here he is with his arms still in a sling talking to the man who became president by virtue of that shooting, his old boss and fellow Texan politician LBJ, of course. Here he is at Parkland Hospital with his wife in the immediate aftermath. This is one of the most moving pictures I've ever seen in relation to the assassination. History certainly laid its hand upon John Connolly in a major way, uh, but he had a remarkable life. During World War II, he served on Eisenhower's staff for a while, and as if that wasn't enough in terms of his non-governor time, later on, and I'll admit I didn't know this, he was Richard Nixon's treasury secretary. That means he executed the Nixonian policy of separating the dollar from the gold standard, something that has repercussions to this very day. And by the way, he could have been president because he was in the running to be chosen as Nixon's vice president after Nixon's thoroughly corrupt vice president Spiro Agnew resigned. And if Connolly had been picked at that time, then he would have become president instead of Ford upon Nixon's resignation. But let's go back to 1964, when he was governor of Texas in the wake of the JFK assassination. Here is the report that would have come onto his desk, possibly the exact one, but I'll get into why I think that. And notice it's dated October 5th, 1964. This was prepared by the Attorney General of Texas, but we'll get to him. And just neat holding a historical document like this. I'd love to know the chain of custody, different hands that held it. Bookmark of sorts. Was that from 1964 or from long after? Don't know. Had another surprise, which was this piece of Hallmark wrapping paper. And we will never know who put that in there or why. The document is not long, as you can see. It's more of a pamphlet. It doesn't detail the events of the assassination. It more kind of recaps what happened in Texas from an investigative standpoint. And the bottom line there is not much, because obviously the Warren Commission took over. Here's Wagoner Carr, the man who prepared this document, and he wanted the state of Texas to be involved in investigating the murder. But as we know, that was not meant to be. Here's a video from the time where he's making that case, so looking for a court of inquiry. He also, interestingly, made the case that any information found should have been made public. And that is far from what happened. Here we are in 2021, and the current U.S. president continued the seal on, I think, 15,000 documents related to the assassination for reasons of national security, just like the last president did. It's almost as if there's more to the story than crazy man kills the president for no reason. Here's an excerpt from the presidential memorandum about it. Regardless, Wagner Carr has this prepared and submitted to the governor. Notice here on the very first page, it's addressed specifically to the governor. It talks about, you know, the murder of the president and the wounding of yourself. So just a unique uh, document in that respect, right? How often does that happen? Sending something to a head of state or head of a state in this case and talking about this horrible crime that they were involved with anyway. This cover letter of sorts is what finally got me to realize this copy of this document here that I have might be way more rare than I thought. How many of these were printed overall? Well, we don't know. But they are collectible, and they sell for hundreds of dollars, uh, almost a thousand sometimes. And yet there's only evidence of a handful being in existence today. Here's an example of one of those. Now, the thing about 
pretty much every existing example, and again, there's only a small handful of those, but the thing about those is they almost all start with this as page one. This is page two, but numbered page one in my copy. Why does that matter? Well, it proves that the first page in this copy here, the one specifically addressing this to the governor, was an insert. And why would you go to the trouble of manually, you know, creating and inserting that page into a copy that wasn't going to go to the governor? I bought this, by the way, in a great little used bookshop in Fredericksburg, Texas. Fredericksburg, Texas is a small town west of Austin, the state capital, where this document would have been prepared and received, uh, and very close to the home of LBJ, Johnson City. Here you can see that other insert dedication pages were made. Here's one copy, or maybe two, it's a little confusing, uh, but sent to a Judge Bibb, and then the back and forth correspondence. Here's another example of a gift copy, I guess you'd call it, kind of a strange gift, but still. You can see that it's from December, so two months after it was produced, so Wagoner Carr had this made, and then had some extra copies made and sent out. I joked about how it makes for a strange gift, well he's way too cheery. In this one, it's like, hey, here you go, buddy. But you get the point overall. And this thing does not seem to have been mass-produced, right? It's having one printed for so-and-so, having another printed for some other friend and bigwig, like this bank president here. And in this example here, when dedicating this to Mr. Truett Smith, president of First State Bank in Texas, notice he says, I thought you'd like to have a copy of the, quote, permanently bound, end quote, report. And that's the thing about my version. It is not quote-unquote, permanently bound, like pretty much all of the ones that are out there. Here's mine, and I think we can at least say this was part of the very initial production. This is before they bothered to create the hardback, permanently bound version like this. The one you saw in this video seems to be much more of an actual governmental working paper, you know, an actual submitted report, whereas this one, these two here, all the other ones I've shown are not. Speaking of that binding, let's take a look again, because it's just cool from a historical artifact standpoint, too. I love the uh, old quality paper. Now, was I able to find just even one other copy that's spiral bound? I was. This one here, which is held by the University of North Texas. The key difference is this, the only other spiral bound copy I could find, does not have the insert page addressing the governor directly which is why we're back to this picture here of mine. Well, I think my channel proves I'm nothing if not thorough, so there was still one other logical possibility, something I had to look for. Is there a permanently bound version with the governor cover letter? Well, there is one, this one here. I know it's a terrible picture, but at least they digitized it. So it clearly has that letter, but it's also clearly the hardcover permanently bound version. Which is all to say, I think one copy was made for the governor himself. Why would you submit more than one copy to the governor? And then a permanent archive version of that exact one was made. It's a pretty reasonable conclusion, although I can't say for certain, of course. Uh, here's the cover of mine, and it has some handwriting. Of course, it could have been added decades later. Who knows? And uh, I cannot make that out for the life of me. It could be by a subsequent owner bookstore, employee, uh, archivist, just anything. I mean, it'd be really nice if I had something to shed some light on the provenance of this copy, but I don't. Here is the state capital of Texas, bigger than the U.S. capital, by the way. Everything's bigger in Texas. And maybe I'm holding the one that was handed to John Connolly in October of 1964. Don't know. Found yet another bookmark, obviously made by the same person, right? Same size, kind of a ripped shred that they used, so I found two of those. And there you have it. So no matter what, I'm definitely holding a very rare artifact related to the JFK assassination, and it's quite possible it is a special one at that. After all, it does begin, Dear Governor Connolly, attached here too, you will find a report on the assassination. Well, there is the artifact, and there is the video. Thanks for watching.